What evidence supports the claim that species are not fixed types? Our most obvious record of the history of life is the fossil record. Given enough distinct fossils, the image of a tree of life begins to emerge. The presence of vestigial traits in living organisms also gives an indication that species have changed in the past. Darwin repeatedly referred to evolution as descent with modification. This meant that species that lived in the past are the ancestors of species existing today, and that species change through time. The theory of evolution by natural selection makes predictions about the nature of species. Let's explore the predicted evidence that species change through time. When Darwin began his work, biologists and geologists had just begun to assemble and interpret the fossil record. A fossil is any trace of an organism that lived in the past. These traces range from bones and branches to shells, tracks, or impressions, and dung, or a fossilized poop known as coprolites. The fossil record consists of all the fossils that have been found on Earth and described in the scientific literature. Data in the fossil record ultimately came to support the hypothesis that species have changed through time. And data from species living today support the claim that they are modified forms of the ancient species found in fossils. Initially, fossils were organized according to their relative ages based on observations about rock formation. Sedimentary rocks formed from sand or mud or other materials deposited at locations such as beaches or river mouths. Sedimentary rocks, along with rocks derived from volcanic ash or lava, are known to form in layers. Young layers are deposited on top and older layers below. Researchers place fossils in a younger to older sequence based on relative position within layers of sedimentary rock. As the scientists observed similarities in rocks and fossils at different sites, they began to create a geologic time scale, a sequence of intervals called eons eras and periods that represented the major events in Earth's history. Vast amounts of time were required to form the thick layers of sedimentary rock that they were studying because erosion and deposition of sediments are such slow processes. This suggested that the Earth was much, much older than the 6,000 years claimed by proponents of special creation. When radioactivity was discovered in the late 19th century, researchers realized that radioactive decay furnished a way to assign absolute ages in years to the relative ages in the geologic time scale. The steady rate at which unstable or parent atoms are converted into more stable daughter atoms provides a constant metric to measure ages against. Radiometric dating is based on three pieces of information. First, the observed decay rates of parent to daughter atoms. Second, the ratio of parent to daughter atoms present in newly formed rocks, such as the amount of uranium atoms versus lead atoms in molten rock when it cools. Third, the ratio of parent to daughter atoms present in a particular rock sample. Combining information from these two ratios with information on the decay rate allows researchers to estimate when a rock formed. According to data from radiometric dating, Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, and the earliest signs of life appear in rocks that form 3.4 to 3.8 billion years ago. Data from relative absolute dating techniques agree life on Earth is ancient, congruent with a hypothesis that evolutionary change happens over timescales greater than human lifespans. In the early 19th century, researchers began discovering fossil bones, leaves, and shells that were unlike structures from any known animal or plant. In 1812, Baron Georges Cuvier published a detailed analysis of an extinct species called the Irish elk. Scientists accepted the fact of extinction because this gigantic deer was deemed too large to have escaped discovery. The skeleton of the Irish elk dwarfs a human. Scientists agree that the deer was too large and unique to be overlooked if it were alive. It must have gone extinct. Advocates of special creation argue that fossil species were victims of the flood of the time of Noah. Darwin, in contrast, interpreted extinct forms as evidence that species are not static. They're not immutable entities unchanged since the moment of special creation. His reasoning was that if species have gone extinct, then the variety of species living on Earth has changed through time. 
Recent analyses of the fossil record suggest that over 99% of all the species that have ever lived are now extinct. The data also indicate that species have gone extinct continuously throughout Earth's history. Biologists have documented hundreds of populations that are currently changing in response to changes in their environment. Bacteria have evolved resistance to drugs in the time it takes to finish an antibiotic prescription. Insects have evolved resistance to pesticides in the short time since humans began using them. Weedy plants have likewise evolved resistance to herbicides. And bird migrations, the emergence of insects, and blooming of flowering plants have evolved in response to climate change. Researchers have reported striking resemblances between the fossils found in the rocks under certain regions and the living species found in the same geographic areas. Extinct species in the fossil record were succeeded in the same region by similar species. The pattern was so widespread that it became known as the law of succession. Early in the 19th century, the pattern was simply reported and not interpreted. But later, Darwin pointed out that it provided strong evidence in favor of the hypothesis that species had changed through time. His idea was that the extinct forms and living forms were related, that they represented ancestors and descendants. Researchers discovered species with characteristics that broadened the scope of the law of succession. A transitional feature is a trait in a fossil species that is intermediate between older ancestral and younger derived species. For example, there are fossils that document a gradual change over time from aquatic animals with fins to terrestrial animals with limbs. Over about 25 million years, the fins of species similar to today's lungfish morphed into limbs that were similar to those found in today's amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, a group called the tetrapods. Supporting the hypothesis that an ancestral lungfish-like species first used stout lobed fins to navigate in shallow aquatic habitats and eventually moved on to land, becoming more and more like today's tetrapods dramatically changing over time. Similar sequences of transitional features document changes that led to the evolution of feathers and flight in birds, stomata and vascular tissue in plants, upright posture, flattened faces, and large brains in humans, jaws and vertebrates, the loss of limbs in snakes, and other traits. Darwin was also the first to provide a widely accepted interpretation of vestigial traits. A vestigial trait is a reduced or incompletely developed structure that has no function or reduced function, but is clearly similar to functioning organs or structures in closely related species. Biologists have documented thousands of examples of vestigial traits. Some whales and snakes have tiny hip and leg bones that do not help them swim or slither. Ostriches and kiwis have reduced wings and cannot fly. Eyeless, blind, cave-dwelling fish have eye sockets. Even though marsupial mammals give birth to live young, an eggshell forms briefly early in their development. In some species, newborns have a non-functioning egg tooth, like those used by birds and reptiles to break open their shells. And many mammals, including primates, are able to erect their hair when they are cold or excited. This behavior manifests as goosebumps in humans which are largely ineffective in warming us or signaling our emotional state. The palmar grasp reflex is a characteristic behavior of human infants developing as early as 16 weeks of gestational age. When the fetus begins to grasp the umbilical cord in the mother's womb, early research found that the human newborns, relying on their grasp reflex, could hold their own weight for at least 10 seconds when hanging by their hands. Monkey infants possess a similar involuntary grasping behavior, but they can hang on from one hand for more than half an hour. In the sixth week of gestation, the human embryo possesses a tail, complete with several vertebrae. In the next couple weeks, the tail disappears, and over time, the vertebrae fuse to form the coccyx, or tailbone, in the adult. Rarely, a human infant is born with a vestigial tail. In modern medical literature, such tales lack vertebrae and are harmless.